There's one problem with exchange. It's all very well for the cobbler to say to the baker, here's a pair of shoes, 18 loaves of bread, please. But the cobbler can't actually use 18 loaves of bread. He's not that hungry. He can use two, maybe. So he's got to get rid of the rest. He's got to find people who want fresh bread quickly because it goes stale. He can use a middleman or he can look for some other medium of exchange which is universally acceptable and which lasts. Now, all kinds of stuff's been used, cowrie shells at one stage. The Romans famously sometimes paid their legionaries in salt. Salt's useful for preserving foods. It can be divided up. If it's carefully stalked, it keeps. And uh, furthermore, it's acceptable. And that's why we say today, he's worth his salt. And we even use the word salary, derived from the Roman word. Money ideally should be divisible. You can divide it up into, into units. And it should, it should last. And it should be fungible, means one bit of it is as good as any other bit, you know. So, historically, people have liked gold and silver. Uh, first of all, they had a, another use. People liked them as jewellery and decoration, you know, kind of stuff. Uh, but secondly, uh, they're universally accepted and they last. It's awkward carrying chunks of gold and silver around with you, you know. So people got into the habit of leaving these in, in, in deposit and having bits of paper that then gave drawing rights on that gold and silver. And they, this is the origin of paper money. Uh, it's a lot more convenient. And as long as there's gold and silver in the bank, they, they, those notes are literally as good as gold. The problem came in the 20th century when governments decided to end the link with commodities. So now we have what is called fiat money. Uh, fiat, Latin word, meaning let it be done. And they say, this 20 pounds is worth 20 pounds because I say it is. <laughs> and it's backed by taxpayers. And furthermore, you have a legal obligation to accept it. So <laughs> you, you can't even choose whether or not you want it. Well, uh, this causes problems in that the amount of gold and silver is limited. The amount of time you can run the printing presses is not limited. And governments have tended to run the printing presses because they like spending money and they spend money to buy votes. And the problem is the more money you print, the lower the value of everyone else's money. And that's why you get things like this $100 trillion Zimbabwe note. I need a barrel load of those to buy a loaf of bread with. Famously, it happened in the Weimar Republic in Germany. And it always involves complete collapse of trust, collapse of investment, ruination of the economy, and destruction of savings. What it leads to is inflation. And inflation is a very bad thing. Madsen Perry attempted to prove once again that economics is fun.